Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We have a very nice week of weather ahead of us. It's like that gradual shift to fall. Yeah, we don't often, I mean, I don't want to say we don't often get that because it's not like I'm, like I can remember every year, but it feels like a lot of years it's hot and then boom, yeah, cold. And then all the leaves like freeze to the trees yes. and they don't fall until spring. Yeah, or we'll lose established plants because they're not ready for that deep freeze. So it's just a beautiful week coming up, which makes me so excited. Like I'm looking at all the soup recipes here in <laughs> much to his <laughs> dismay. Was there was that meme that I saw. It was like, oh, you hid a bunch of food in water. Well, okay, I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I feel. You know, though, I found a few soup recipes that you do like. That are like, they're, they're almost not soup. Yeah, that's the thing is I, I don't mind soup as long as it's real chunky and yeah, there's a lot of, of stuff of in it. Stuff. It's mm -hmm. the it's the soups that are like mostly broth that right. I'm kind of like, well, I'm not really that thirsty. So <laughs> thanks though. Are you heading back to the house, dude? Yeah, I, I did. I was just getting out last thing and then going oh, okay. back out so, so I don't bother you guys. Cool. All right, cool. See you a little bit. Okay, so let's just jump into the videos from last week because I can't remember. Oh, soup. We were talking about soup. Yeah. Yeah, well. Soup's coming your way, Erin. <laughs> First video was new tree load because of course we did. So we had planted the two horn beams and that mm -hmm. like lit a fire because all of a sudden you see the potential. I mean, we, we already knew we were going to do a big hedge of trees, but we thought this is such a perfect window of opportunity to get things in the ground, let them root a little bit. And so we went down to the garden center and just brought you guys along for our tree load. And we actually planted a few that day, right? Cause they were two, like yeah. the, the smaller cans because they kept falling over. And yeah. You and I planted and um, <laughs> we're planting them so high, which uh, some people, I saw some comments about like, I think you're planting them too high, but truly, like once you hill them in with all the compost and stake them down, make sure that they can't fall down, which, you know, we've done. I think they're going to be great. And we're going to bring in lots of, I already called our uh, local tree guy and asked if they could bring some wood chips. So I kind of want to put a bunch of wood chips, same as we did in the South Garden. Yeah. Um, I want to put a bunch of wood chips down. And so we're going to be raising the, the whole level out there. Mm -hmm. And it'll make sense in the end. I just didn't want them, you know, if you planted them at soil level today and then brought in a bunch of wood chips, they're going to be, they're going to be down, right. you know, three or four inches. It is hard to mulch when you've got them even at soil level. Right. Yeah. Okay. First question is from Infinity Health Pilates. I'm on our HOA. We are needing to replace some neighborhood entryway trees. Need columnar trees or more upright trees. Non-fruit bearing with nice fall color. Anyone? You should look into like the, I think it's called skinny jeans oak. They lose their leaves in the fall, but they have nice red fall color and they don't make a big mess. I know a lot of people are using those. Um, I like Apollo maple. Yeah, it's a good one. And that stays 10 feet. Mm-hmm. Um, those columnar horn beams, they're columnar because they look columnar when they're done, but they still get 20, 25 feet wide. But you might have that space. I mean, some people just can't afford like the 40, the feet, 40 foot ones. Know? Sure. Yeah. I boy, there's a lot. Go to JF Schmidt website. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the best idea because like sometimes I can rattle off a bunch of names, but sometimes I'm just like, Durr. yeah. Like, Okay, Sweet Voice said, where does your mom find those handy wheelbarrow dollies to move the trees? Those are just tree cart, or not tree carts, those are just regular dollies that they've been customized. They've been welded, like things welded onto them by the guys down at Andrews. So over the years, you kind of figure out what you want. And the, I think the dolly we were using is the double decker. So you can put a heavier tree on the bottom mm -hmm. and a lighter one on the top. So you can do two at, at the same you time. Know, somebody just recently sent me an email uh, with some, I think some links to some tree carts oh. or like pot carts. They could like be legitimate used for, tree carts. Yeah, yeah, they could be used for anything, I think. Um, I'll see if I can find that email and maybe like link some some stuff below. It'll be handy. I've never tried tried a legitimate thing that's like called a pot mover or mm -hmm. a tree mover that actually works as good as these do down at Andrews. Yeah. So the ones down there, like the there's the bottom platform and then they weld it on two like arms down below so it kinda like holds the pot in. And then um, they uh, tape is it like insulation uh, pipe insulation it's like a new pool noodle yeah basically that you can just put over and duct tape those on so you can move concrete with them all sorts of stuff and you can just okay, replace nice. that insulation whenever yeah. you need to yeah once a year or whatever nina said do you guys talk about budget at all before making a big purchase yeah we do mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's kind of changed over the years, but we're fairly similar. I mean, we've well, we yeah. learned each other's. Yeah, we know things. like what we're going to be spending money on, and we we've already like talked about kind of how that's going to work, and so you we kind of know like how much money there is to spend on things mm-hmm. like you know, yard stuff, trees or projects or things. So you kind of know the budget that you're working with, Mm -hmm. which, you know, admittedly is much larger than it, you know, once was, uh, which is, is fun, but it's also what we do. You know, it's our business. It is. It was funny. I, this kind of has to do with it, but I posted a picture of Aaron and I on our, a little anniversary getaway that we went on this last weekend, went up to McCall, Idaho for just two nights and it was beautiful up there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Great weather. But I posted a picture of us and like, you might've been wearing that shirt yeah, and I was right. wearing the same shirts that I always wear. And someone was like, gosh, it's like a special anniversary trip. Why don't you wear something different? The same clothes, like, come on. I'm like, I don't buy new clothes. Like right. This this I've probably been wearing for three years. I bought it on Amazon for probably 20 bucks or yeah. something. But like all of our budget <laughs> goes to trees right. and outdoor projects and things like that. And I think you and I have learned. Like I mean, we save too. You know, we, we're not we like do. blowing our money on no. things. No, but we're very like, we're very similar in what we want to spend our money sure, on, yeah. which is helpful. That's very helpful. I'm glad about that. Yeah. But anyway, that was kind of on topic, kind of not. <laughs> That's, that comment made me laugh, though. Uh, D. Zach said, how about a lesson in how to clean your Felcos? We should do another one of those here fairly soon. Because I know the first one I did, I used water. And Felco was like, God, ah, don't use water. But I always use water. Well, they were like, you can use water. Just, you just have to make sure it's very dry yeah. so it doesn't rest. Well, and usually I clean everything and let it set overnight. Like, it sits on a towel and it's completely dry before I put it back together. So I just hadn't even thought about that. Mm-hmm. I've learned so much since we started making videos, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, just for that reason, it probably would be worth a do-over. Yeah. Um, to show, like, the proper method. Yeah, because if you use water, you can go wrong. And I think that's yeah. what Falco was trying to yeah. steer people away from. Yeah. Is, like, what's a foolproof way to clean your Falcos that, yeah. you know, that you can't mess up? Right. <laughs> uh, Donna said, I noticed when you planted your trees that they were planted a couple, in- a couple inches above the ground. False. They were, like, six to ten inches above the ground and I'm like six uh, inches <laughs> six inch ribbon girls yeah. um yeah I don't know that's your deal well that's, okay so like I if you are going to overwinter a tree which you have experience doing at the garden center right that's a thing that a lot of garden centers do yeah you have to overwinter trees what do you do you hill them in with compost or like bags of soil mm-hmm. or things like that to you know that's what we have done we planted them high we hilled them in with lots of goodies. And especially when we bring in the, the wood chips, um, like I said, if we planted them at soil level now, they would end up being yeah. below level. And that's, I don't want that. They're going to be awesome and everybody is going to. I hope so. I Because honestly, planting like that. Eat crow. But <laughs> planting like that is awesome. Yeah, it's so much less digging. And I love so that I have digging. somebody to blame if it doesn't work. Usually oh, it's I, totally going to work. Yeah, usually I have to come up with some kind of defense for my actions, and I'm like, I don't have to come up with anything. This is awesome. It's super easy because you don't have to dig a very big hole. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. It, w- it will be. I mean, in theory, it sounds fine. I wouldn't... I mean, it's not necessarily something that I would recommend for everybody out there doing that but if you do know that you're going to bring your your soil level up with compost are you going to do that before winter though that's like the thing for me i feel like making sure it's really good nested in. well how far away do you have to nest it in like right now they're hilled yeah so like how much mulch are you because i don't i'm not going to bring the wood chips like right up to the root balls Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i don't i don't know that it'll really make any difference we will see you guys can learn from our experiment here. I don't even think of this, it's an experiment. I think it's a foolproof system. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. You've heard it from Aaron. Okay. Nikki Kirk said, would there ever be a meet the team video in the future so we can ask Paul and Bethany questions? Would love to meet them properly because they are just as much a part of the GA family, which is absolutely true. Um, you know, neither of them have really expressed an interest in ever wanting to be on camera. However, they're really good about putting cameras out. Yeah. Like, and they'll ask us, hey, we're going to be cleaning out this or that, or um, do you want me to capture any of that on video so that we can show part of that if you're going to be filming, you know, like the next step in this area. So a lot of times we say, yes, if you'd put a camera out, that'd be great. I don't know. I don't know their feelings about like being in front of the camera. We could ask them. Yeah. Yeah. See what they feel like. I just don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. It's a vulnerable position to put yourself in. Sure. Um, so I don't want 
to, uh, to make anybody feel like they have to or whatever. So maybe I'll, well, I'm sure they'll hear this conversation yeah. and maybe they'll let us know yeah. <laughs> how they feel. Uh, Mark Wagner said, did you get the Oregon green pine? I don't think we got it that day. I think I forgot. I was like in such a puff about all That's of the trees. That's the one trees. that doesn't get as tall. Um, right. And we've already got. We've got one. Yeah, we've got one of them. That I, mean, I think will maybe like in. On the inside. Yeah. Something that stays a little bit Phase small. two. Phase two, yeah. There's going to be lots, lots more trees well, coming. Yeah, lots of phases. We don't have any trees on order oh, or picked out. I talked to uh, to Nathan, the lad. We just like kind of were shooting the breeze about... About some big trees? Well, I, I sent him a little video of our pond area, and uh-huh. I was just like, hey, you know, we love the trees, and it mm-hmm. worked out as like, it's a great backdrop. So he called, and we were just talking. But anyway, so maybe... We well, I, I do know we need to move a couple, a couple of trees. Ones. Yeah, we need to move a couple. So I think he's going to bring his spade over to move a couple, which would be not not big. I think one of them is one of the big ones. But. He said that his uh, his season, his moving season is like starting this week. It makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. he doesn't want to move them during the summer when right. it's, you know, hot or whatever. Mm-hmm. But We'll see what happens. That would be fun. Yeah. Boy, and those trees, um, other than that maple, which had problems before it even got here to our prop- property, it had borers and we didn't know it. And I don't think he knew it. It was just one of those unfortunate situations. But every other evergreen that he's installed mm-hmm. is wonderful. They've all rooted. We've taken the supports off of one or two of them at this point. Yeah, the um, first batch that we the got. The first batch, yep. You're supposed to leave those on for like one season. He or said something. one or two years, so which means like we could start taking them off the other ones. Mm-hmm this fall if we wanted to but i might just leave until spring Still spring i say one season i usually mean growing season when i say that which is kind of like a year yeah you mean i need to change my verbiage on that i know i just heard myself say it and thought oh that's confusing uh hannah said i didn't see any rocks as you were digging is that because it was a farmer's field before or is your area naturally not very rocky it was a farmer well it was a sheep pasture before like it has years all, ago it's all been irrigated before yeah. and has grown crops yeah uh, but our area like our general location in this valley it's not very rocky right here um my I wonder parents if house. a lot of the rock, if there was rocks at one time. Maybe. Because, like, I've looked at aerial photos from, like, the 40s and 50s and 60s of our, like, our house. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you can see row crops. You know, people were farming it. Yeah. And so I wonder if at one time. What would they We don't have rocks though? come up, though. Because, like, I know in, uh, in the Midwest, you know, that's a thing. Like, every spring you got, right? Spring you have to go out. Like, um, the ground's after heaved the, out more yeah, rocks. Yeah, the freeze thaw. Like, there's new rocks that you got to go take mm-hmm. out. But I, we don't have that here. But where would we would see piles of them, right? They would, like, start Yeah, building... they would use them for things yeah. if there were rocks. Mm-hmm. I just Maybe don't that's think how we're... they built our fireplace. Perhaps. But or probably not. One small fireplace has yeah. as many rocks. Okay, next video is finishing the tree planting, perennial planting, and pathway patio update. So you and Paul were finishing up the trees, and I think Paul and Beth needed the last tree mm-hmm. together. Um, I didn't know that until later. I don't even think I reviewed that video. I think you did. Mm. So I didn't even see it before it went out. Um, I did some perennial planting of some kind. Boy, after like a week and then going on like a mini vacation, I'm yeah. like, uh, I don't even remember this. I do remember doing a pathway patio update because they got the sand in most of it Mm -hmm. uh they were one bag short i don't even think a full bag short it's just like six feet of the walkway uh still needs to be done but largely finished and so nice so nice yeah oh i love it blake cooper said i'm always so amazed at your plant placement and creating the perfect drift any pointers on how you do it well it's not perfect all the time that's for sure sometimes i do a drift and think oh i need to add three more or i need to move this one a little bit that way or sometimes like a plant is in a can, rooted in a can, but like, let's say the foliage canopy like shoots off in one direction. So the actual center of the plant is in the middle of that root ball, right? And it's just grown weird that year. Well, sometimes I'll place the drift based on how the plant looks outside of the can. Mm. And so things won't be spaced right. I did that with the lemon jade sedum in front of the Hebe statue and it's driven me crazy ever mm. since. Uh, so there's like a weird gap in there and it's not big enough for me to fit another plant, which means I'd have to dig them all up on that left side and move them all over so that it fit. 
doesn't happen all the time. Usually when I'm doing a drift though, I like to start off like skinny on one end and then I kind of like make it get bigger and then I kind of swoop it back and make it skinny again so that I can start another drift of something else in front of it. So it's not like just a square chunk of plants. I like it to start and finish kind of disappearing if that makes sense. Um, I don't, if it's a drift, it can be even or odd numbers. It doesn't really matter because there'll all be a big gob in the end anyway. I don't know if uh, I always try to look for the four colors in an area so when I'm sizing up a spot to place something I try to make sure I've got good evergreen placement or I leave a spot for an evergreen um, and then blue green yellow and red I try to make sure that it doesn't have any bloom color but uh, foliage whatever stem color could be part of that but I try to make sure there's a little hint of each one of those colors in every space and that kind of my mom taught me that and it does kind of make the whole area look like pleasing, mm -hmm. unless you're going with a theme. Like if you're doing moon garden and you're doing all like shades of green, I mean, there's definitely some, ugh, those are so gorgeous. So yeah, I mean, that can vary depending By on your red, lights. By red, you mean pink? No, like red um, leaf color. Oh. Yeah. If we're talking blooms, I don't usually base my decision, my decision off of bloom color. It's off of leaf color because not everything is in bloom all the time. Sure. So... I hope that was helpful. It was kind of a convoluted. Eric Lopez said, I love it all. Been watching since the beginning. Wow. It's a long, long haul. Question. I know it's probably too late this season, but do you have any plans to set up your two fountains you took down? With the pond in the back, where would you put the three-tier fountain? That three-tier fountain, it was cracked beyond uh, repair. So we I still think have some of the bowls. We do have the bowls. We just got rid of the cracked parts. Yeah. The biggest bowl was like severely cracked. Um, and there was no repairing it. And honestly, that one, you know, we got that one. It was gray, like a gray finish, which I usually just go for a regular concrete finish, but it was so white, like just hard water crusted, which, you know, if the whole thing is hard water crusted, it just looks like it's a white concrete fountain, which mm -hmm. is fine. Um, but it was kind of patchy and, uh, you know, yeah. So we do have some of the parts saved that we may use and cobble that together somewhere. It was a beautiful fountain and it didn't splatter, which was great. That was a three tier Grand Kensington mm -hmm. from Henry. Um, and I would absolutely do that exact same fountain somewhere else. Get a new one. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe order it in white <laughs> to begin with. Um, and then we took down we took down the Hebe fountain under the crab apple up front. But that one never really ran. It splatters like crazy. I would not recommend that one. I thought we put that one by the kitchen. No, we put that. Um, it's like a... It's from Unique Stone. Oh, it's got a little the, different. The basin. It's a little different. Hebe is like is it's a miniature oh, of the sure. big statue, and she pours into like a clamshell. Right. And that one I could never get to run properly, and once I did, it splattered like crazy. And then the one by the back kitchen, I can't remember what it's called. Beautiful fountain. It splatters like I don't even know how you would run that fountain properly without you know, it splattering. You almost need to put um, one of those like aquascape like basins, basins underneath underneath to capture the water. It's that way, thought. if it splatters, and then do like a rock, you know, rock on top of it, and yeah. then set the whole thing on top, and that way it can just saturate through, collect in the basin, know, and you can recycle the water. That kind of gets you away from like the tucked in fountain feel, where it's just like you happen upon this fountain, and instead you've got like this rock barrier around it. You can't plant things because the water has to you? capture underneath. Because it, it'll just sink through. You can put soil over the top, can't you? I think the soil would get in there. I don't. I think it would need to be mostly rock, like gravel. Would it? I think so. You might be right. <laughs> anyway, it's a pretty piece either way, but I need to figure something out for that. Sometimes I wonder about the molds, you know, these fountain molds. Like, you've run your fountain, right? Like, how do you run it and not have it lose all of its water in the first hour that it's running? Yeah. <sighs> uh, Miss Cash Kelly said, what do you think of Heath's and Heather's? Well, I don't have many thoughts on those because we cannot grow those here, so... Sorry, I don't really have an opinion. They're a pretty plant. Remember, um, oh, you weren't with us on that, that uh, England trip, the first one, mm -hmm. when I stayed in York. Um, we went to a coastal town, and we drove through the hillside, and there, it was just covered in heather that was in bloom, and that was beautiful. Oh. I look all lit up now. Yeah. Nice. We got to turn the light on. Melissa Anderson said the pond looks amazing. I'm curious, why did you choose to use sand for the pond walkway, but not in the South Garden? Uh, you know, the pathways in the South Garden, one, we had already started that one pathway without the sand base or the, the road mix kind of base uh, because we weren't sure exactly if we wanted to keep it 
in going that direction. And until you get some of your bigger stuff in and figure out like some harder infrastructure, trees. And- I think the reason was that um, we were creating that patio, the flagstone patio by the pond. And you, you know, if you've got chairs and stuff on there, yeah. you really need it to be like solid and not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And then if you've got the walkways coming off of that, it's like you might as well just sand Continue. in the whole thing and just do it a, a base. Because that yeah. is like the proper way to put down. But if you're just doing like walking paths to get from one area to the garden to another, it's not like heavily trafficked. Whereas like that walkway to the pond, we use it every day. Yeah. Whereas the other walkways in the garden are not necessarily everyday walkways. Mm-hmm. We also wanted the flex. It was cheaper quicker to get it done yeah and we wanted the flexibility to be able to move it around but we knew around the pond that we weren't going to be moving anything around like that right it's going to stay right where it's at and then like the stones around the edge needed to be glued down and then we wanted everything to be nice and tight because we're going to be sitting on those stones and right you know yeah jim lang said are you ever going to plant up the empty beds behind the boxwood hedge on the west side garden i love that garden but it seems unbalanced to me and I can see where you would think that or somebody might think it's unbalanced just because there's a lot of plants on the right-hand side and there's nothing in the flower beds on the left except for all the boxwood hedging. I don't think I'll ever plant it. I mean, never say never. If I did, it would be something that was mass planted. I wouldn't want it to be a jumble because I, would, I feel like if I did plant it, it could err on looking messy too much. Uh, but it would be something low, something that contrasted the boxwood in both color and texture. Something like blue fescue, perhaps. <laughs> Something like it that. Just make sure that it's looking dry and like it's it's wanting to die. Do you guys remember the blue fescue behind the gazebo? I don't think that was watered properly. That whole area was. We always struggled. I know struggled. it wasn't watered properly because it, there was like a sprinkler that never really worked back there, and yeah. there was no drip. Yeah. So I think that you would like it if you saw it in a situation. Yeah, I, I probably would. Where it was cut back every year, it came back fresh, and it had proper water. Yeah. Not that I would plant that there. I just say that for Aaron's benefit. But um, yeah, so if I did, it would have to be something very uniform. But what that space does for me is it's very peaceful. I think you can utilize empty sp- spaces, uh, lawn spaces, patio spaces, just like something a little bit more expansive in the garden, just as much as you can use plants to create a pretty space. And that a lot of times it's personal. I see some gardens that are featured in some magazines. I'm like, oh, that's totally not my style. Mm-hmm. I would not do that, but I can see where somebody would like that style, you know? So I think it's all subjective. So. I like to see the boxwood. I like to see the sharpness of the structure over there, especially in the winter time. And I'm super happy that there's nothing in the flower beds to take away from that. I don't know. Does that make sense? No. No. Volunteer living by Liz said, absolutely love the brick pathway garden. What color iris are you thinking of planting in those spots? Well, I would love to continue on with the same color I've already got, which is a champagne color. So what I might end up doing is just dividing what I have and just continuing on with that same color. I can't seem to find that one. Um, And that one was here when we moved in. I just love it. I think that color's pretty. Am I wrong thinking that Iris most of the time just has like burnt, uh, torn tips in the garden? Like the majority of Iris's life is spent with burnt tips. And that's what what you see more often than anything else. They look really pretty. Do they? Yeah. Okay. We grew Mars. Again, I think proper water has a lot to do with it. Tanya said, everything is looking beautiful. Did you end up pulling the big stump out of the water? We have not yet. I don't know. Are you going to? Maybe we will. I don't know. It's not ever really bothered me, the tannins, that that stump is giving the water. Because it's good for the fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe once we have more shade in the area, we'll pull, pull it up a little bit. I really wouldn't want to move it from that spot. I would just want to like figure out how to bolster it, <laughs> get it up out of the water, put something else underneath it. Oh yeah. You know, cause I, I do like the structure that it gives and that's where all of our stuff is like attached to that stump. Hidden. Yeah. yeah. Right. We'd have uh, to put a post or something to yeah. put all the little electronic gadgetry. Unless we just raised it a bit. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how far down it's actually in the water. Right. Greg was here yesterday um, and he was asking me, are you going to plant up the hole in the, the, in that stump? And I don't know that I will. Because I kind of like, it's kind of fun to go look, look down in there yeah. and see what's in there. Uh, and I feel like it looks so natural. Mm-hmm. Loretta Higgins said, what will happen to the pond in the winter? Will it ice over? It will ice up a bit. We will put a... Like a trough uh, heater? Yeah, like one of those little heaters you can just 
float in the water. What do you call those? Stock tank heater? Yeah. Is there that you what go. it's called? Yeah, stock okay. tank heater. Yeah. So we'll put that in there just to keep it opening in the water there. Um, and the fish, I think minimum depth for koi is two feet, and we have a three foot depth, maybe even slightly deeper than that. Mm -hmm. um, so they should be fine in there. And it's going to be beautiful. I think that's the huge benefit of a pond over a pool to me is that ponds, if you did like a rec pond one day that you could sl uh, swim in, like a rec recreation swimming pond, you would get all year interest out of it instead of just, you know, six months out of the year or less. And then yeah. the rest of it's spent all covered up with a big old cover. You know, in the winter, you can enjoy the, the falls and the plants and kind of the natural beauty of it. And then in the summertime, you can swim in it. Yeah. I I like the formality of a pool too, though. Yeah, to me, they're just not the same thing. It's like, you know, a pool is clean and clear. It should be, you know. Uh, but That's like, part of my hesitation. Yeah, a rec pond. It's like saying that swimming in a, you know, a pool is the same as like swimming in the lake. It's like, well, it's just, it's different. You can, you can, it's both water, but like one is really clean and clear and one is not. I think so. The cons of a normal pool is I feel like we would be out there all the time making sure. I mean, I guess you can get auto dosing pools, right? And yeah, those are I think like so. skimmers that will take off all the leaves and vacuums. Like, I, I feel like a pool would need to be pristine all the time. I think the there's time. a lot more automation now with pools. Yeah. Um, I'm just so used to how my parents was. They've got it more automated now than they did before, but. It was so much work. Every time there was a slight breeze, yeah. we're like, oh, we got to go well, skim and, all those you know, leaves Well, you know, like off. an aquascape pond is like, it's an ecosystem. Like, you mm -hmm. know, Greg calls it an aquascape ecosystem pond. Mm -hmm. And that means that there's algae in there and the, there's fish in there. And mm -hmm. there's like a, there's a system going on, which is cool. It's nature, yeah. right? It's natural, not chemical pond. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not just dumping in a bunch of chemicals to keep it clean. And so, so I fully support that. I think that's great because the fish are in there and, but to me, it's just, it's not like it doesn't seem like a great swimming well area. maybe not this one because it's not like big enough to actually swim in yeah but uh, the kids can and it's fun to get them there and cool off but when the wind blows and there's leaves on top of the water it's like oh it just looks like a natural stream yeah. and it just like adds to the beauty of it which i love and also the thing i do like about nor like formal swimming pools is i do like water about 86 degrees yeah <laughs> and so you could extend your actual use of the swimming portion like if you wanted to swim a lot, right. you could heat it a little earlier. Yeah. 84, 86 is like my jam. That's about where my parents keep theirs. It's nice. Well, and they, um, they just recently got an automatic cover on theirs yeah. and it didn't seem like it was having to work very hard to no. keep it warm. They when barely you keep the had cover to, yeah. on it, it warms up during the day. You open it up in the yep. evening if that's when you want to swim. Mm -hmm. Keeps it cleaner too. Yeah. Nice and toasty. Becky Peterson said, how big will the shark get? I don't know. I don't know that they get enormously I, big. I was reading some comments and I, I'm afraid that some people think it's a real shark. Oh, it's just the name like of it. It's a high fin banded shark. Let me see if it has any high fin banded shark. How big size four feet, five inches long and 10 to 15, Whoa. 10 to 15 year lifespan. I don't think it'll get that big in a, this is on the internet. So <laughs> Hold on. The Chinese hyphen banded shark is a popular freshwater aquarium fish that belongs to the family, blah, blah, blah. It grows to about four feet, five inches long and is unsuitable for most home aquariums. <laughs> so good is for- Is it a carp? No. What kind of fish is it? My Myxocyprinus asiaticus. Huh. Are they aggressive? No, they're peaceful and social. And actually like those, I don't, um, I don't see it very often cause it's like black and brown and it kind of matches the tannins in the water and the stones at the bottom. So I really have to look, I do think it's grown though, since we, in all of our koi have, since we put them in the pond, it's really fun. And they're starting to get a little bit more uh, used to us too. Uh, they said it would take a little while. Mary Bollinger said, do you ever have issues with a hawk attempting to catch your koi for a meal? The fish in my backyard pond met their fate when a red tailed hawk found the pond and had the fish as an appetizer. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, I haven't noticed any bird activity around our pond. It's also the circle of life. <laughs> oh, well, that's true, but still. Um, but I, I think haven't... a lot of people like don't think about nature <laughs> very often and like how nature actually works. Maybe. It's brutal. It is brutal. Uh, but I haven't noticed any of that around our pond, thankfully. Yeah. 
And hopefully the fish would run and get into their fish cave. Yeah. Or swim fast and get to their fish cave. Okay, next video was an update tour and perennial planting at Monica's house. So we went over there, or I went over there, just to see what it was looking like, give you guys an update. I brought some perennials that we had just got in, some Purple Illusion Veronica, the Fun and Games Ice, ice, ice Pie, I think, Cucarella. Uh, beautiful plants. We got those in the ground. I did some weeding in the grass. I didn't show you that. But after after we were all done, we were actually waiting for my parents met us over there, and then we went, went and had some Thai food. And um, so we weeded the grass for a little while until they got there. But it was fun to see it. And Gardener Supply had sent out a trellis to go between their two back windows. And then uh, they had also sent out a trowel and a kneeling mat which I ended up using. I had wanted to use it all summer long. I've had those things for a couple of months and I've been looking at that kneeling mat like, oh, that looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I ended up being the first one to use it <laughs> when I was planting over there. Coloratura, Elise said, what was that yellow bug on the basil? Was it a praying mantis? I couldn't see it very well. Yep, praying mantis, it was a big one. I love to sew, said I love how Monica's yard, yard turned out. It's so beautiful and cozy. What kind of roses did Monica choose for her arbor? I wanna say they're Lady of Shalott climbing roses. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. They're kind of an orangey color, real pretty. Jen said, yay for Monica and Nick. Everything looks so beautiful. I have a smallish yard too, and this video is so inspiring. Question, Monica said the area by the Hookerellas is full of shade, but I thought ivory halo dogwoods needed full to part sun. Will it do well in full shade too? Thanks for another great video. So they will do the best if they get more sun, but dogwoods along with dervelas are two of the most shade tolerant shrubs that you can plant that are deciduous. Um, they will not bloom as productively and they will not like fall color as productively as they would with more sun, both varieties, but they can tolerate a lot of shade. So they're a really good one. And another thing is they probably won't get as big as the mature size on the tag says, which is fine because back there, there's not a lot of space. In fact, you guys, a lot of the plants that are back there, the pine, the Japanese maple, the service berry, um, the weeping, all of the trees she had picked out prior to, like I didn't pick out any of those plants, but she was having fun as you know, loads came in that spring. She had a little collection of things she wanted to put in. So anyway, it was kind of fun just to look at her collection and we just kind of like, she already kind of knew where she wanted things placed too. Mm -hmm. So that's always kind of nice. I just helped her with like the curves and things like that. Shirley said, so fun to watch another new garden grow. Just wondering if the Veronica normally blooms this long in the summer or is it because they, they're new from the nursery? Do you know if the white blooms turn brown as they fade? White blooms do turn brown as they fade, like on the white wands, Veronica. However, that variety of Veronica is the most pollinator attract, attracting. It has, I don't know what it has. Uh, we hardly ever cut ours back mid-season because even the spent blooms, even if there's tiny little white blooms on the very tip of them, the pollinators are just nuts for those plants. Um, ours out in the garden that are already planted have color right now. Uh, usually they're on this, this time of the year, they're on their second, possibly third phase of bloom, and um, it's weaker than the first. First phase of bloom is always the most productive and showy. It's kind of like salvia. They're like, boom, you know, in end of May, June time. And then you shear them back and it takes them a while to come back and then they'll bloom again and it's not quite as good of a show, but we still are enjoying color off of ours right now. Uh, G G Z said, Monica, Nick, it's absolutely gorgeous. I gasped out loud at the reveal. Any thoughts on the kneeling pad? Yes, I like that kneeling pad. I like <laughs> the thickness. However, my favorite kneeling pad ever is not made anymore. Right. It was like Tommy Co. I think they still make them, but they're small. Yeah. They used to make like a giant oval one. It was like this gel cushy. Oh, that was the best. Need to figure out how to get that manufactured again. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. Gayaroznovsky said, thanks for the update, it all looks great. Just wondering, is Monica subdivision near your property? No, it is about 435, 40 minutes away. It's uh, closer to like halfway between here and Boise. So she commutes every day, every work day a little bit. Uh, Go Beresty said, pigs, did you say pigs? You have pigs? I do not hit, have pigs, but Paul and Bethany have pigs. And it's awesome because as we get ready to clean things out in the garden, they'll just clean out as much as, as will fit in the back of Paul's truck and then I'll take it out to the pigs. So like yesterday, I cleaned out a vine in our greenhouse, a vine, <laughs> the winter squash that grew in there. And I harvested all the squash and then I just put the vine in back of Paul's truck and they took it and fed it to uh, their pigs, which is it's so perfect because so much of our garden debris goes to the pigs and I don't have to take care of the pigs <laughs> yeah. or any of that. So it's just, it's wonderful. Ian Campbell said, uh, so happy to see this update on Monica's garden. Looking great. Are you going to plant any bulbs for the spring? I'm going to be planting bulbs for the spring. I don't know where they're at. Usually they're here by now, yeah. I would assume, but they're coming. 
Uh, Monica planted some, so she already had some. In fact, I dug one out when I when I planted the first Veronica. I popped one bulb out, so I just planted it right next to the root ball. Um, anyway, so she's got some that'll come up this next spring, and that's always such a fun treat. And Jaylene said, thanks for this garden update tour. So happy to see Monica enjoying her space. Question, where did Monica get her teeny bird bath? Absolutely love it as I have a small backyard as well. I think she got the bird bath at the garden center at Andrews. And then Nick ordered this like solar fountain thing. And I think your dad has ordered that for your mom yeah. too. It works really well. Um, soaks in the sun and just like makes the water move a little bit. Birds love it. And the last video, we did skip a video this week because we were gone. Yeah. So we're short one. So this is the last video from this week which was removing grass, transplanting established roses, and a big time wisteria pruning. <laughs> it was a very productive day. Um, so Paul and Bethany and Aaron worked on scraping up the grass in front of the Hartley, just like half of that lawn in preparation for the walkway that's going in, which they've already dug out. The underlayment is down. And I don't know, they're not here today, so. Are they not? I didn't see them out there this morning. So the uh, pavers will go down here fairly soon and it will look just like flagstone uh, i mean yes i'm sorry flagstone it will look like the walkway around the pond so yeah all the walkways that we do that are not brick will be that flagstone and i liked your idea of possibly doing that all the way around the hartley one day like where yeah. all the gravel is that'd be a tremendous undertaking so not for a while but that would be that would be like something in the future sometime yeah that'd be something nice to we gotta buy some buy up some pallets of rocks um so the removing of the grass and then i transplanted four, six, seven roses that day, one Tranquility, th four Lady Gardeners, eight roses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight roses, four Lady Gardeners, one Tranquility, and three Pope John Paul II, which honestly, if you want a white, I don't know if that one's grown anymore, like it is, right? You could probably buy that one if you can. Those roses have been in this garden for, they were here when we moved in. Uh, but if you can, it's the best. I think it's a hybrid tea, big white blooms that have the best scent. I forgot they were there. And the reason is because I had all these climbing iceberg roses that were planted all the way around them. And I kept forgetting they were like tucked in. I'm disappointed in you for throwing away the icebergs. Oh, for crying out loud. I did not review this video either before it went out. And I wish I would have, so I could have put a little asterisk that said these roses did find a new home. Bethany took all of them. And in the uh, video, I talked about how like there's a certain line where some things, it's just the wrong plant in the, you know, in that, in a space. And there's a line where you just need to get it out. And sometimes it's easier just to pop things out without worrying about getting a big root ball. And these things were massive, you guys. Like Bethany, I was pleased that she wanted to take them, but she was sending me pictures of the the size of the trunks on these things <laughs> they're huge i'll bet and you know i could have moved them certainly to some other area of your garden but the climbing icebergs it's a commitment any kind of climber it's a commitment you have to have something either you have to be okay with it flopping all over the ground or trying to manage the size which is what we were trying to do with them where they were at you have to have something for them to grow on and those do have thorns and uh, while they're pretty i'm they're kind of pretty from like a, the angle that you showed that one angle, I know. I, should, I shouldn't have showed them from that angle because I'm like, ah, everything starts to bloom when we're getting ready to pull it out. And then you look from like every other angle and you're like, oh, those are real like kind of snag roses. Yeah, they just look like the wrong plant for that space. Anyway, I wish I would have known they were going to live on <laughs> at that point. I didn't know Bethany was going to give it a shot. So anyway, they've all been dug up, not pulled out, and they are planted. In fact, I think she took our big auger home that night and oh, really? got them all in. So. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, and then I did a big time wisteria pruning. Oh my gosh, I need to get the ladder out though because it looks funny. It's like all like beautiful trunk and then this massive poof at the top of wisteria up there. Uh, it needed a major overhaul just because I saw that the, all the vines coming down and I thought I was sizing up where the boxwoods needed to go and I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to pull this wisteria out because it's right in the way of the boxwoods. It's not, it was just all the vines that had come down. So I think we'll plant right along the base of that trunk, the boxwoods, but I won't have to move it so long as we keep it trimmed. Mary Quay said, love the white roses, but it got me thinking about thrips. Did any of them get to the flower beds around the house? Yes, I sure hope not. No, we just were like pretty inundated with the thrips this year. We did notice a significant decrease. The other thing I'd noticed a very few amount of was spider mites this year. Yeah. It was like a not spider mite free year, but Less. dang near close. Yeah. Um, maybe the thrips ate them. I don't think thrips eat them, but maybe the pre predatories ate them. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I go out there and I test the dahlias and I'm getting very few thrips in the dahlias right now. Still like 
I'll find one or two, which is kind of normal. Uh, the rose garden out there, I do see like some of the blooms come up and look thrip, like thrip damage blooms. So I know that they're still in there, but we'll see what happens. I think if we get after earlier next year, we leave less debris out this year. I feel like we would need to do like multiple applications. Yeah. You know, like, like pick uh, three or four times where we apply yeah. those predatory mites to the garden. Mm -hmm. If I we think, were going to do that next year. I think we should try it. Certainly, because the amount of good activity we had in our garden this year, it was so awesome to see. Mm -hmm. So awesome. It made me feel good. Yeah. You know, and like your garden should make you feel good and not like, oh, I'm going to have to go spray this stuff. Not that I'm against spraying. You guys know that. Um, I think it's definitely necessary. We sprayed the super tunias and super bells still. Mm -hmm. We spray those either with Captain Jack's dead bug or BT. Um to keep the budworms out and they occasionally will have aphids. So it's just a very targeted spray this mm -hmm. year. But overall, like we didn't use anything on the boxwoods. We didn't use anything. Right. It's awesome. Uh, Rebecca said, I live in Grants Pass and I have roses lining in the front of my home. I'd love to transplant one of them somewhere else as it is a different shape and I've never seen it before and does not match the rest. Do you think it would be safe to do in my area this time of year? Yes, I'd get right after it, get it moved. Kay Fowler said, how do you keep your roses looking so good after blooming? I have old-fashioned roses, and after their first bloom in the spring, they lose all their leaves and look terrible. Any advice? I don't think they're supposed to do that. No, that's weird. Ours just maintain their leaves. We don't, I mean, other than um, deadheading them, we just keep them deadheaded. I know that's not a helpful answer. I don't know why yours yeah, would defoliate. defoliate. Yeah. That's, that's strange. I would maybe, like, get in your area, maybe ask somebody that's knowledgeable, a gardener in your area, somebody at a local garden center that, uh, just tell them what's going on. Might be something in your specific area. Jennifer said, just wondering, I have a hydrangea that needs to be moved. It's about three feet tall and maybe two feet around and it's been in a spot for about three years. Could I cut it back like the roses and replant? It does look healthy, just doesn't get enough sun. Yep, if it's not performing like you want it to, I mean, it's a risk to move anything, but move it. Move it where it's gonna get more sun, do it now when it's cooler and less risky but at least you would have a chance on it, you know, enjoying more blooms. What do you think a temperature range, like a safe temperature range from like 50 to 75? 80. 80? 80. Yeah. And you know, we move stuff even when it's hotter than that. You just got to make sure to keep things really maybe like wet. like 45 to 80. Like if the lows are getting down to even 40, maybe. Yeah. 40 to 80. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Kay said, I'm moving to another state next year. I'm taking shrubs and other plants from my garden. Are there any tricks to keeping them alive in pots? They might need to live in pots for a year or so. Make sure you've got a big enough pot to support the plant. Um, get as much of the root ball as you can, you know, when you're moving them out or digging them out. And make sure to keep fertilizer going, you know, fertilize in the early spring and then maybe reapply. You, I think in containers you could reapply. Like if you're using a spoma, um, you could use it probably once a month. Mm -hmm. A little sprinkle around the edge of the container. Uh, Linda said, do you wear small in the Felco 702s? Oh, the rose gloves. They're not actually the legit rose gloves that Felco sells. They sell like... Uh, they have actual rose gloves. Leather ones. Um, I use the 702s. I couldn't remember the number in the video, but they're white and red. Mm -hmm. And I think the white part might be leather and the rest isn't, but they are awesome for roses. And oops, I still feel like I have a little bit of dexterity. Dexterity. They are bulkier than my normal gloves. Uh, and you guys know I don't love to wear gloves anyway, but when I'm working with roses, you just, a necessity most of the time you have to, especially when you're getting in there. If I'm mm -hmm. just deadheading, I don't wear them. Um, but they're awesome. I don't ever get anything. Like no pokes at all. Um, and yes, they are a size, I wear a size small. I don't think my hands are like really small. Mm -hmm. Like just kind of normal. Um, Barbara said, I just planted four next season, four next season glorious roses. And the instruction said not in big bold letters to add anything but manure as fertilizer. Even if it is in potting soil would burn the roots. Are you worried about biotone burning the roses you've transplanted? No, I am not. In fact, so we planted our rose garden or started that this spring and I planted a bunch of like kind of bare root. Oh, well, they weren't, the ones I got from the garden center hadn't rooted into their soil medium yet. So when I took them out of the container, most of the soil just fell off and it was the bare root sticking out. And I still use the biotone. I remember heirloom roses saying, oh, you don't want fertilizer to be up next to the roots that can kill the roots. Um, but they said you probably didn't use enough and it's an organic, mm -hmm. but probably don't encourage, you know, because if it's a synthetic fertilizer and if it's too much, it definitely can burn the roots. But you guys should see our rose garden right now. 
It looks good. It looks good. Everything has grown beautifully. There's been like no issues at all. So I think it has to do with quantity, the type of fertilizer you're using. Definitely pay heed to instructions, you know, the professional instructions on a tag. Uh, but I've never had a problem with biotone burning anything at all. And the last question is from Allison, will the pallet walkway remain? It's all going to be so beautiful. A portion of it will. I don't know why I haven't pulled up the rest of it. I think what I want to do is, you know, where you enter in and you're like coming toward the wisteria and then this area is the Hartley area back here. I think under that arbor of wisteria, I'd like to put some kind of a pretty statue like that the pallet walkway kind of leads up to. I don't think there's enough room to actually put a walkway back through that flower bed anymore because we're going to be widening that with gravel where the benches are and that'll kind of be the walkway right there and then back behind it will be flower bed. So I think you're going to need to remove the all the pallets. You can put them back down uh -huh. in a different way, but I think we're going to have to rework it a little bit because the patio is kind of like taking up a little bit too much space. I think in the end, you might even want to move the arbor. Oh, you think so? I don't know. We'll just have to see once yeah. we get all the boxwoods in, but like that is going to have to reshape. You know, and when you said that, that got me thinking, maybe I could remove all the pallet, pallet things which like, I kind of want to go back to the original palette walkway video and just like do a nanner post to all the comments. Yeah. Like, this is not going to last. This is a terrible idea. I'm like, how many years later, palettes still are awesome right, <laughs> right there. Um, but I could lift all of those and just use them like out in the South Garden. We could do like a little, a little palette walkway. Yeah, that bothers fit. me though, because we've been doing the, stone, the stones. And I kind of want to keep going with the same genre of yeah. stone. Pallet walkway is good for a time. And it was good in the area when it was more rustic, I think, too. Yeah. It's becoming less rustic. Yeah. Um, the South Garden is more rustic than right. the area around the Hartley. Yeah, because you've made it pretty formal mm -hmm. or with the Hartley and, you know, the shapes of boxwoods and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it doesn't feel like it goes like it once did. Mm -hmm. I still think, yeah, I still think it's a good idea, the, the pallet walkway. And I love it, like that kind of feel in front of the chicken coop, because that will always feel more mm -hmm. country around the chicken sure. coop. Sure. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. And I think that is the last question for today. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and for all the questions and everything. Always great. Hope you're having a great day and have a great week. We'll see you in the next one.